What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, in a text to you regarding, I think, episode three and four, but I, as a whole, I still have this adjective uh, uh, of calling it a charming series uh, for the Star Wars franchise. Your thoughts on that statement? Yeah, I think as I'm really, I'm really getting into this show. I've Gotta be honest, I'm really digging this show, and I think you're, you're hitting on it, which is, you know, it's it's very Star Wars. Like mm-hmm. I don't, at least the way I understand Star Wars to be, this has an understanding, which Dave Filoni obviously does, of what elements Star Wars typically works with. Right? There's there's the, there's the Force, there's the Jedi, there's space adventure, there are creatures some of which are very cute and 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 toy friendly like you know the storytelling and the sides are not overly complicated right there's a little gray area but like you can kind of tell who's good and who's bad and then there's a few in the middle and that's i i really like this i think i think this show has as it's gone on continue to pick up momentum to where i thought in episode six one thing that was a sign of real progress was ahsoka didn't really appear in the the episode and i still thought it was interesting because in particular finally mm-hmm. a certain individual made it onto screen in live action and was at least in my estimation every bit as formidable as i imagined him to be oh, yeah. all these years. oh yeah oh yeah Balin skull brian what do you think his ultimate goal is It kind of seems like he's after some source of power on this ruined planet. And I I I wonder if he's going to turn good or if he has been good the whole time somehow and we didn't really? I don't know. There, well, the only reason I say that is like he's not all good obviously. He had to fight with Ahsoka, but he always waxes nostalgic about the Jedi. In fact, in this episode, he really did it when they were wandering. He kind of was like, I love the idea of it. I didn't love the reality of it. But then when Thrawn kind of called him out effectively and was like, I basically, I know you. I know you were a general general of the Jedi Order, meaning I kind of am aware of you. And then later on said like, well, I don't really care if, if Balin and Shin survive either. Just, uh, who cares? Like, I think it's setting up for one of those two to actually not be evil by the end of this season. But we know Balin has to die. So that's why I think it's him. I think he's killed by his apprentice. Oh, interesting. But see, I think that's what I mean. I think the moment before his death, it would not shock me if he does something heroic or he does something to help our heroes. I don't know. I just, I just, yeah, I find it hard to believe they're both going to stay villainous in this sort of chase that they've set out on. Yeah. uh, Thrawn's appearance (laughs) is certainly, I thought, I found it chilling. Yeah. Look, I mean, Lars Mikkelsen obviously has voiced this character and now has had years to get ready to actually portray it physically. And, you know, I think it's, it's like a, it's a masterclass in sort of restraint and how like restraint can be great acting, right? There's, There's an economy of movement even an economy of like the way he's looking at you, but it's very sinister. He's in complete command at all times, which is, I mean, the hallmark of Thrawn is that he is three steps ahead, which is a tough character to write, right? You have to write genius, right? We talk about Reed Richards. I was, th- you, I was thinking about right now. It's, it's not easy. And, and that's going to be the big test. I think of these three episodes, we know he's going to be around past this, Eighth, uh, past the season finale, he's probably going to be the main antagonist in the Filoni Star Wars movie. That would be my guess as to how this gets resolved. So, a lot of work for him to do, and he, yeah, he really has to outfox our heroes a lot of times, uh, and they have to come up with a pretty good plan to beat him. I mean, that's 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 like kind of the challenge here. But I love the portrayal. I can't, you know, this is like you don't need to be you know, wielding double lightsabers and flipping all over the place to be powerful. And this is the, this is the case of it, right? This is the, this is the chess master. And so I loved seeing that, you know, that presence. I also got to say, I really did like the depiction of the night troopers. I really liked the kind of like the battle worn stormtrooper army. Like that was well done. I was like, this looks cool, powerful. It reminded scary. me of the mask 
in, that this dude had in Gladiator when he flipped yes, it down. Yes, good call. Yeah, yeah, the legendary <laughs> fighter. Yeah, exactly. But it's like it made uh, me wonder, like, what is, what have these guys been doing? Like, what what have they been up to that they're like, you know, that they've been through all this? You know, so it, I think it's, yeah, I think it's set up for, you know, we're not going to get resolution. But I hope we get a lot of him in the next two in the next two weeks. I am looking at his troops and I'm saying to myself, this obviously this dude don't play. And this we're not gonna have dudes that are missing all the time in a tunnel. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're not gonna see that. These guys are trained dudes. He he's not about foolishness. So I would expect that his army is well trained and he already stated that his army has been diminished and i have to say that there is pretty much no hard labor because they don't have to carry nothing they just float you know what i'm saying like why yeah. you got two people <laughs> taking this but uh they're supposed to be um, doing some resurrection it's supposed to be this massive thing so it's going to be very interesting if this carries over all the way into the movie and towards the end yeah, and but like I said, this show has done a nice job of like there's there's room for him because again we haven't our character set is still pretty limited. We we got Ezra Bridger too, which we'll talk about, and I thought that was actually in you know, a small role. That was I thought also a really good performance. Um, but yeah, there's 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 room for real character development and fleshing out, and like I mean I. <laughs> You know, I I texted you and I was like the the only like thing that just made me mad. I felt like I felt like, you know, we went we've gone through all this, I don't know, strife and turmoil in the Star Wars franchise, and a lot of it had to do with unimaginative storytelling in this last trilogy, right? The First Order was just a copycat. Snoke was a copycat, and it's like you had the guy; he's right there. He's been there for years in the novels and in the animated show. And you see him on screen for five minutes and you're like, I feel like a Koye in Infinity War. Why was she up there all this time? That's what I felt. <laughs> I was like, come on. Like, how hard was this? Yeah. We couldn't have had a trilogy with this guy as the, as the nemesis. But there are certain people who wanted to have their name up there. Ah, yeah. So we got to bring back Palpatine. Okay. <laughs> I mean, just watch this guy in this episode and tell me you're not at least more interested to see a campaign or a war or some kind of struggle against this guy. Yeah, yo. I'm mean, glad uh, we get it. I'm thankful we're getting it. But I'm yes, just like, yes, it yes, makes yes, me yes. more angry about the last trilogy. So that's yes, all. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, one other thing, though, before we... uh -huh. <laughs> Let's talk about your other thing, which is spot <laughs> Which is as good as I think they've introduced Thrawn and as good as a lot of the Star Wars the elements are in this show. <laughs> we talked about Sabine at the at the start of this show. We said you had to be careful. She's definitely going in the nuisance direction <laughs> more than the hero direction. So Man. speak on it because you brought it up. Like what is annoying you most about her at this point? Uh her obsession with Ezra and that. Did you find them seeing seeing each other lackluster, Brian? A little bit. Yeah, like, a little bit. I'm pretty sure people who had were watching the animated film were probably looking forward to this. Yes, yeah, it was a big moment. And it just seemed like it was a lost opportunity. That joint looked like I haven't seen you in like a month. Like, oh snap. <laughs> what's up damn that's been you know that's how it felt like like this dude has just been gone for like two three months and and you know you found where he's at and yeah. and i gotta say this i find it hard to believe that sabine and a big ass rat found <laughs> this dude in a day and this dude, Admiral Thrawn, the the genius, couldn't find him. Well, that assumes he didn't know he was there. Uh, see, <sighs> I at least give him the credit that this whole thing he kind of he he has already <laughs> thought because that comment he makes about like I've already thought about who cares if they make it like basically who cares if Balin and shit. It makes me think that he's kind of already contemplated this, knew. and there's some other like. I need this to happen in this way to get something else that I want. 
that's at least how I'm choosing to interpret it so far. Because you are correct that if at face value, if she's able to just walk right into the wasteland and <clears> discover <throat> him, quite honestly, not really hiding, right? He's just he's, he's in this little village with the with the crab creatures or turtle, whatever they are. Um, yeah, that would that would kind of be strike one against Thrawn's genius right out of the gate. But I I, I actually tend to think he knows also because Ezra, if this is the Ezra that we that is in the canon. Ezra is actually about as powerful a sort of force user as there is. Mm-hmm. Thrawn would clearly sense and know where he was and where he was basically at all times. So I kind of tend to think he does know he's out there. Yeah, but let us know anything else, Brian, before we wrap this up. No, point. I would just say, like, like I said, this show is, ga- to me at least, gaining steam. The episodes are pretty tight. There's not a lot of wasted material here. Like, so, you know, if, if people are late to this, like, get on board like it's it, 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 if you can just get through the first like two episodes and then it'll 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 move for you brian do you find that in this episode do you see i mean although this is always the case in these sort of storytelling that you're telling you're just sort of talking to the audience but they're really talking to the audience audience about this new direction that they're sort of, yeah, the past was this and that, and they're sort of reinterpreting things. Your thoughts on that dialogue that he's having with us? Yeah, I think that's a felony thing, though. I mean, I think that's just his expertise, and he's he's able to kind of like, you know, because he he did obviously create Rebels and Clone Wars and was behind that. I think, and he has, you know, such a knowledge of the of the whole canon and the Legends series and all that sort of stuff, like. I think just he he's able to kind of weave in the elements and like give you like like I think people who were devout fans of Rebels <clears throat> they're getting their cup filled because they're seeing these characters you know on screen and like every portrayal has been pretty much on like right physically on, yeah. like tonally like so, but it makes sense because the same guy created both right so he's mm-hmm. directing that and but then he's also I think servicing like yeah they're trying to rehabilitate Star Wars as an IP. And like, that's what I mean by like this show, like if Andor was the, I don't know, genius showrunner flexing what's possible to do in Star Wars, this is the like someone who really understands Star Wars, getting Star Wars back to what Star Wars is all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to this new direction. This is something, Brian, that we've been discussing for a long time in terms of where they needed to go. They need to move forward, and this is where they're finally going. Yeah, we, we talked I mean, about this a long time ago. Yeah, and I said like, you know, we're gonna get a movie at the tail end of these different move, these different series. But like, there are scenes in this show that I would like to have seen on a big screen, like so, the, like that that Balin, Ahsoka, Shin battle. Sabine, yeah, Mike, damn, that would have worked really well cinematically. Like, so you know, that gives you hope. Yeah, I told you that, you know, if, if I could see all this on a, in a theater, I would watch it because of how good it looks. Yeah. Um, especially Ando. Ando was beautiful. And, 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 and this this one looks great as well. So um, I'm looking forward to it, Brian. I'm looking forward to it. I'm hoping, you know, you know how people... I haven't really been reading what fans have been talking about uh regarding the show have you read anything or heard anything I think, you know i think they're generally liking it there's definitely some questions and some you know there's always nitpicks but i think generally the reception has been pretty good to like seeing the characters and seeing what you know it's a story i you know i i did before we leave the show hayden christensen um I, i've referenced this in our other show I, we didn't we talked more about episode six but episode five what do you think about sort of his his this is a real full f- fledged return albeit in flashback form and sort of dream form in the world between worlds but i found myself really enjoying the flashback scenes to the clone wars and seeing him alongside the young ahsoka and it made me like it just kind of i was like again it was like maybe it's just him being older as an actor and like coming back to this part and understanding it better but i almost feel like had we gotten scenes like that in attack of the clones I think we look at his portrayal differently than we do now. I, I thought he was really good in the episode. He was just a part of a badly written and directed, you know, yeah. thing. And and this one... It's interesting because I felt like even in the Obi-Wan series, I really liked that one flashback training scene. You know, and yeah. it's like I see, I see these scenes and I'm like, 
this is the character arc that would have set up Revenge of the Sith. Already a great movie that people don't remember. If we had had these types of scenes before the fall, I think we view that whole progression and his performance differently. So it's interesting to see it now where you're like, he's almost rehabilitating that old performance by showing us these these flashbacks. I, when I see these scenes, I have a better understanding of why he wanted to come back. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I see yeah. it, I'm like, yeah, you, you had something. You had something to give and the writers had something to give you. And yeah, it's working. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm happy for him, I'm happy for him. Uh, but yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Shoka ser- of the Shoka series so far. Um, so far, Brian, I think we have a lot to look forward to. Uh, I just wish we, I don't know. Is it a case, I, I, do I wish we had more? Because once this is over, what's next? Well, yeah, I mean, the skeleton crew is technically the next in the calendar but prior to the strike right so that one got frozen and then really it's i mean the one the acolytes the one that i just like foaming at the mouth to see right now i'm just like that i can't wait but like yeah you know i I, i'm definitely this show has already done enough to me where i'm like yeah season two give it to me i'm I'm, i'll be good you know have you seen there was one episode in visions that was dope in visions two I don't think I've seen that. I haven't seen Visions. I think Visions it was episode one, I of. I liked Visions one, but the first episode, and that's it. Yeah, this, that was this, the best one. that was the, that was that one. I could see a whole series of that, but and, and then Visions two. There's an episode. I think he's either five or six. That's pretty dope too. Um, but yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of Star Wars, uh, Ashoka series, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Energy Report. The show goes on! Yeah.